What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Proverbial Life Podcast. This is a podcast where we encourage Christians to look to Christ, live wisely, and leave a legacy behind for generations to follow. If you would like to financially support the Proverbial Life Podcast, please consider doing so on patreon.com slash or backslash proverbial life. Again, that's patreon.com backslash proverbial life. All right, y'all, let's get right into it. This is sad, but I am not surprised. On this video, we're going to discuss Lecrae's debacle. Yet again, Lecrae's debacle. <sighs> Let me play the video. This is from Vlad TV. Lecrae's asked a very pertinent and important question that's relevant to the climate of our culture today. And he has the opportunity to magnify Christ in the word of God. And what does he do? He doesn't do that. He completely bypasses anything that has to do with magnifying Christ, lifting Christ high, and pointing to the ethics that's found in the scriptures. And 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 anyway, so let's just get right into it. I want you to hear this for yourself. So here we go. Well, you're married with yeah. three kids. Yeah. Uh, and you have, what, two boys and one girl? Yeah. All right, okay. let's stop there. Okay, you're married. Yep. You got uh, three kids. Yep. Okay. That that right there, y'all, th that's a testimony to the world, right? That's a testimony to the world. I'm married. I have three kids. And, you know, this is an opportunity now to talk about that great responsibility that we have as fathers to train our children up in the way of the Lord, to love our wives like Christ loved the church. This is that time to lay the groundwork for the world that's watching and say, look to Christ. Let's see what he does. So if one of your kids, let's say one of your male sons, yeah. comes to you at 20, 23 years old and says, hey, dad, this is my husband. We're engaged. We're going to get married next month. And I want you to be in the wedding. All right, let's stop there. He's going to answer so he's 2023, 20, and his son comes to him and says, Dad, this is my husband. We're going to get married, and I want you to be there. There's a lot of problems here, okay? There's a lot of problems. And, and I'm going to let him kind of dissect all this as he speaks himself, kind of just tell on himself. But, you know, when we, when, we, when we talk about our children, how we interact with our children and our responsibility as husbands and fathers to our children, we are to be training our children in the ways of the Lord, okay? We are to be, uh, we, recognize, we recognize that our children are stewards, right? That we're stewards. We recognize that we are stewards over our children, and because of that, we have responsibilities to train them in the ways of the Lord. And in training them in the ways of the Lord, that isn't just something that we uh, passively do. That's something that we actively do. In other words, we're talking about important topics like sexuality and identity and the sins of the culture, right? As your child grows older and his mind can grasp different concepts. You explain to them the importance of God's command for a man and a woman to be together. So that doesn't mean that sin can't affect homes. But again, there, there's this mindset where, well, maybe maybe my child might turn out gay, right? But, but the thing is this, y'all, God keeps his covenant, right, to families, and he's faithful as 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 parents are teaching their children the ways of the Lord and discipling them and pointing them to Christ, he's faithful to thousands of generations. He he'll keep his covenant. And so so this idea of like, well, I just hope, I just hope my child doesn't go that way. But if he does, then I'll just love him through that. Nah, that's not okay. My response would be: listen, God knows all things. I don't know the future, but I'll tell you this, man. God gives us a promise as parents in the scripture that if we train our children up in the way of the Lord and we're diligent to point them to Christ, that he, he will honor that and he will 
keep covenant with our children. And so I, I, I'm not anticipating that to be the case with my son. You know, we, we've laid down the groundwork with him. We've taught him the ways of the Lord. We've talked about identity. We've talked about biblical marriage. We've talked about the union of a husband and a wife coming together as one. You see, when we teach our children this, when we teach, you see, when we teach our children these truths from the word of God, God is faithful to keep covenant with our children because we're in covenant with him. And so God will honor that and he will move and awaken their hearts and they will be followers of the Lord. Now, obviously they need to trust in the Lord, but what I'm saying is, is that when we lay this groundwork down, when we, when we are pointing, when we're discipling our children, when we're pointing them to Christ, then, then the likelihood of them going into these grotesques, ungodly, blasphemous sins are very unlikely. Again, anything can happen. God knows in his sovereignty, he can permit different things. But again, that isn't, that isn't in keeping in covenant with God, right? That, 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 that isn't, that isn't, the norm that isn't accepted and it shouldn't be it, it shouldn't even be a hypothetical idea that christian parents who are truly the lord should even consider in their brains right so i say all that i want him to finish let me let him talk yeah what would you say my thing is like this i don't like my brother's gay you know what i'm saying and so like i don't I don't condemn him. I don't look down on him for him being attracted to the opposite sex. You know what I'm saying? That's that's something. Same sex. That, yeah. Or y'all, I messed up. I, I I didn't even let me show y'all this. I'm sorry. Oh. If one of your kids, let's say one of your male sons, yeah. So if one of your kids, let's say one of your male sons yeah. comes to you at 20, 23 years old and says, hey, dad, this is my husband. We're engaged. We're going to get married next month. And I want you to be in the wedding. All right. So now that I have, hold on a second. Yeah. Okay. Now that I have the, uh, now I have his face showing a moment ago, I did it. So I apologize for that. I got that just went right into it. So let's uh from here on out, you're seeing the audio of Lecrae and you'll be able to listen to it. So let's uh let, let's hear his response here. What would you say? My thing is like this. I don't like my brother's gay. You know what I'm saying? And so already, man. Already, already. As soon as he opened his mouth, he went astray. As soon as he opened his mouth, he went astray. Listen, y'all, why are we ashamed of Christ and what the Bible says? Come on. Why are we being pragmatic? That's the wrong answer. So what? Your brother's gay. That don't have nothing to do with the question, and, and he's going to tie it in with the question, but it's the wrong answer. It's the wrong answer that a Christian should be giving. Like, I don't, I don't condemn him. I don't look down on him for him being attracted to the opposite sex. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's something. Same that, sex. Yeah. Or the same sex. Excuse me. I don't condemn yeah. him. Okay. So, so this, this idea of condemn, I don't condemn him. Of course, that's your brother, right? So, so you're not, you're not going to condemn him and browbeat him and all that. Okay. And, and what I mean by that is you're not going to like call him names and all kinds of gestures that that are not you know that are not fitting for a christian to to utter out of their mouths right like we're not going to throw out slurs or any kind of derogatory names or name calling right we want to we want to deal with the heart of the matter so we're gonna we you know we we want to deal with the truth and we want to confront in this case his brother in love or his son in love by speaking the truth that's not condemning speaking the truth and being persistent in doing that isn't being unloving. That's actually the most loving thing you can do. Your son and your child, if they go astray, in the case of your son, if they go astray 
And and again, the if they go astray has a lot to do with, not all, but a lot to do with how did you as a parent and you you and your wife, how did you train them up in the way of the Lord? Did you? Did you send them off to public school for someone else to train them up in the way of the Lord? And they were educated in the world's ideology of sexuality? Did you have uh, cousins and uncles and family members who were attracted to the same sex train your children? Were your children involved in sexual abuse at any point? You see, all these factors come into place, right? But in a Christian home, with a father who's pointing his children to the ways in the ways of the Lord, with a wife who's you know comforting her son and loving him and 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 you know uh, disciplining him according to the scriptures and teaching him right, homeschooling him and educating him in the ways of the Lord with the classical education, pointing them to the great writers of the past and teaching them how to read and to write and to communicate. All these factors, right? When you're doing that. Again, God promises that he'll keep covenant with his people from to a thousand generations. So, so again, this mindset of, you know, if they go astray, well, then if they do, and and and, and now he's living a, a, a he's a, a homosexual, he professes to be a homosexual, and he's living that lifestyle to the degree that he wants to get married with someone. Uh, oh, oh, now I'm not going to condemn him. Like, what's that even mean? Like, you see, when you when you use this, when you when you use that phraseology, especially with unbelievers, I'm not going to condemn them. What that means is you're you're teaching, you're discipling unbelievers on how they should respond to anyone who says something about their sinful actions, right? Because Lecrae is a Christian, and Lecrae equates disagreeing and coming against his son's lifestyle and pointing his son to Christ with the word of God, Lecrae communicates that concept as condemning. And so anytime anyone comes to me as an unbeliever with anything that I don't like or something that I deem to be judgmental, then I'm going to say that's condemning. Then stop condemning me. Don't judge me. It's because of people like Lecrae that just you know, have this fluffy, soft, unbiblical, anti-God position on something that is basic to Christianity 101 is because of people like this, that people like Vlad and others just, you know, why not? Why, why do I need to serve God? So let's continue. You know what I'm saying? Like, if anything, we'll, we will dialogue so that I can have a better understanding. Because I don't profess to be like, I got this all figured out. And I come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, come on, bro. Come on. Y'all, this sounds like a false convert. This sounds like a false convert, y'all. I don't know. I'm just telling you what it sounds like. This sounds like a false convert, y'all. That that it, if 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 um if Benny Hen said that, we would be all over him. We we would make memes, we would be blasting him. But Lecrae say it. We know it's wrong, but Lecrae said it. So we ain't going to blast him and we ain't going to say, we ain't going to check him and we're not going to, like, we're not going to, there isn't going to be any call for him to repent or to reconsider or to nuance his position. There's no call to that. But this right here, y'all, let me, let me play this again, y'all, because I need you to hear what he said here. Because I don't profess to be like, I got this off. Will dialogue so that I can have a better understanding because I don't what okay profess to be like I got this all figured out. What do we need to dialogue? So, so dialogue I get. All right, let's talk because I don't profess to have this all figured out. What you talking about, bro? We, we um, what, what do you mean you don't know? Lord help me. 
So you don't mean so you mean to tell me that you don't understand the Bible's teaching on one man and one woman? And I know the way this should be. Like you don't know the way this should be? This is pragmatism. You don't know the way this should be. You you see this is the thing, man. He can't give a clear biblical scriptural godly Christ honoring defense of marriage because he loves the world, y'all. This, this is what James says. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. This is I love the world theology right in front of you. This is what it is, y'all. This is I love the world theology played out right in front of you. Like I'm trying to read the Bible. I'm trying to have conversations with people and I'm trying to understand you know, the, the perspective, you know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like anybody... Understand the perspective of what? See, again, the context is this is his son. And his son comes to him. So he's going to talk to his son. He wants to listen to his son and dialogue with him. He wants to hear his perspective because he doesn't have it all figured out. What don't you have all figured out, bro? When it comes to sexuality, when it comes to a man being together with another man, repeat what God says. That's blasphemy. It's wicked. It's evil. Rent your clothes. Roll around in dust and ashes and plead for God to, to, to save your son. Right? But it's like, you know, when, when I hear this, man, I'm also reminded of Dwayne Wade. You know, same thing. It's like, well, I, you know, I got to figure it out. This is, this is a Christian version of Dwayne Wade, y'all. What he's saying sounds like the Christian version of Dwayne Wade and his son. Now, in this case, it isn't, you know, the case, right? His son, I, I don't know, right? Lecrae's son isn't gay. Dwayne Wade's son is, okay? But, but that's exactly, you know, his, Lecrae's response is Dwayne Wade's response. They sound the same, right? That same flow, that same, that same vibe, right? Well, the problem is Lecrae is a professing believer. Dwayne Wade's not, okay? And if you sound just like the world on matters that God is very clear on, this isn't the Trinity. He can say, you can say, man, I ain't got it all figured out when it comes to the Trinity. I, I, I actually don't even really want to give a definition right now because I, I feel like if I give a definition, I might fall into some kind of heretical thing and I'm still studying. Like that's something you say, man, I, I don't even got it all figured out, right? The, the the Trinity is something that you can apprehend but not fully comprehend. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you could say that, but but when it comes to the issue of sexuality and a, and, and a man and a woman, come on, bro. You dropped the ball here, man. Who wants to come at a person negatively, like if you was if you was a Christian and you came to me negatively, then it's like you're not giving me the grace and the space to be a learner, you know. Okay, and this is something he says in his video several times: the grace and the space. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> listen, 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 y'all. Listen, this is very important for real. This is very important. There, there are there are times, y'all. There are times when we can reason. And we need to reason. We always need to be ready to reason with unbelievers. But we, we need to reason from the standpoint of giving them the truth. Okay? There's no grace and space, right, when we're talking about blasphemous, wicked, and evil sin. Like, could you imagine if, if someone, you know, uh, I'm talking to someone and they say, um, yeah, man, I, I, I sleep with my dog. Like my dog and I have sexual intercourse at night. Bestiality, right? Bestiality, the Bible calls it. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a, a criminal offense against God and it deserves the death penalty, right? Bestiality. You imagine, you imagine me saying, listen, man, I just, you know, 
I just need to give him the grace and the space because because I don't got it all figured out. It's like, but 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 the Bible says that it's an abomination. Now nah, see see because I I want to be a witness to him. I want to be I want to be a light to him. I want him to come to faith in Christ. So so then call him to repentance, right? Highlight the sin that God clearly lays out in the word of God and show him his utter depravity and need for Christ and call him to repentance. I mean, that's that's basic 101 Christianity. But when you love the world, this is what you hear. You know what I mean? Help me, you know, give me the space and the grace to learn. And and that's how that's how we move forward. You know what I'm saying? So you can point something out to me and say, hey, this is what it says. Lecrae, you should know better. You should know this. Well, you know, give me the grace and the space to, to take my time and to understand the perspective on it and to understand. Come on, man. This grace and the space thing, y'all. Come on, y'all. Don't use that vocabulary when it comes to sins that God absolutely abhors. Don't don't do that. Cause because God might straight up discipline you. Like for real. If you're his, he he listen, y'all. When you when you speak on God's behalf and you lie on his name, in his holiness, God has the right to snatch you up. I mean, he he does. In his grace, he chooses oftentimes to let a person go on, right? Storing up judgment for themselves. If they're unbelievers, storing up wrath for themselves. So this grace in the space stuff, don't don't do that, y'all. That 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 that's the phraseology of a false convert. Okay, now I, don't, I Lord knows, I, I'm just telling you what I hear. And I listen, y'all. This is what there's a lot of this stuff isn't new with Lecrae. He he's been a little squishy for a long time, right? So I'm not surprised. I'm really not. But when you hear it, it's like, yo, what what happened? And why these people think it this way and it like that's that's the perspective I have. I'm more of a learner and I and I give people the grace and the space as I'm processing and as space. I'm learning. Um, you know, and just walk with people through that. You know what I mean? So so what what are you gonna walk what uh, walk with people through that? Man. Y'all, this is this is one of the most um prominent faces in big evangelicalism. And, you know, he's kind of divorced himself from Big Eva uh, because, you know, Big Eva is white, whiteness, right? And, and so he's not he's not really in that sphere, but he is, you know. Um, let me let this finish playing. Be, be a lifelong learner, man. Be okay, so... Learner? Your son asks you to be in his wedding with his husband. Yeah. You do it. Come on, y'all. See? Vlad asked him the question again because he never answered it. He went all this space and grace and give me the space and the grace to learn. And, you know, I, I don't got it all figured out. And, you know what I'm saying? And then, 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 and all this junk, right? And then he says, listen, yo, bro, so if your son is gay and he tells you, if he asks you to be in his wedding, would you do it? My thing is this. I want to support my son and, and 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 let him know that I love him. You know what I'm saying? Let him know that I care about him. So Listen, y'all. I'm going to be honest right here, y'all. If my son invites me to be in his wedding with his husband, I'm going to look him dead in the eyes and say, son, are you crazy? After I, after I, you know, and then again, I mean, like, have you not been walking with your child? Like, how, how is this a surprise now? And then 
all of a sudden, I know this is, this is a made up scenario, but how is this a surprise now? And then all of a sudden with a month to go or whatever the case is, you're going to invite me to your wedding, right? But let's just say I've been walking with you. If you told me, let's say I found this out about my son, uh, which, which again, if you're raising him in the ways of the Lord, God is faithful to keep his covenant to a thousand generations, right? But let's say, hypothetically speaking, this is the case. And my son comes to me a, a year ago, right? So next week is his wedding. A year ago, he came to me and said, dad, I'm gay. I would walk with him. Never would I say, I'm going to give you the grace and the space. Never. I say, son, I'm, I'm, I'm broken hearted, son. My heart is broken because mommy and poppy did not treat, train you that way. We did not raise you that way. And you know very clearly what God says in his word, son. I'm pleading with you. Repent. Turn from your sin and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you. We'll get you counseling, right? If there's something that mommy and poppy did or didn't do that caused you to feel like you are not loved and you don't know yourself, we will do whatever it takes, buddy. We love you. I love you. And, and so we talking, right? But now let's say my son still will not repent. He'll still continue. He's still going forward, making all the wedding arrangements, all of this, all of that. The, the, the month comes, right? Dad, I know we talked about this in the past, but are you going to be in my wedding? No, son, I can't. Because I love the Lord Jesus Christ, I can't. I can't, son. And I'm pleading with you again, son, don't do it. Don't do it, son. This is an abomination to God. Don't do it, son. Please. I'm telling you, your life, God, God can still redeem you from this, son, if you repent. But but son, don't do it. There's so much brokenness here that you may that you don't see. Don't do it. That's what I'm doing, y'all. I'm pleading with him. I'm snatching him from the fire. Right? I'm not doing this. This is this is a neglect. This is fatherly neglect, y'all. So for me, it's not about my son's gonna know it's not about a wedding. It's about like my dad being supportive of who I am as a person through and through. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not about, do you agree with this decision or do you agree with this decision? You know what I'm saying? My son want to play football, not basketball. I don't like... Stop. 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 <sighs> Are you kidding me right now? Marriage is not in the category of sports, Lecrae. You see, one thing, man, I know with these woke guys, man, Lecrae is in the, the woke camp. These woke guys are allergic to the Bible. They give the Bible lip service, but they are allergic to the Bible. They use the Bible as a springboard, and they use the the, the the phraseology of the scriptures, but they don't love the word of God because they don't love God. I mean, how else? I, I don't know. Like I'm missing something. I don't know, y'all. I'm getting a little excited because this is frustrating. <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, bruh, I want you to play basketball. I want you to play football. But I, 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 I don't want you to marry this guy. I want you to marry this girl. But, you know, you're going to choose to do you, so I support you. What? I love you. You know what I mean? So, so even I, I love you. So I love you so much that I'm going to just let you, you know, walk your way into hell. I'm not going to stand in front. Right? I, man, I remember. What's that quote by Spurgeon? He says, oh, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to link it below. But Spurgeon said, while people, this paraphrase, while people are on their way to hell, they're going to have to step, they have to step over my body. And 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 so Spurgeon, why? Why would you do that? Because we love we because he loved them. The creating the image of God. These people are going to hell. Lucrea's son is going to hell if he does not repent. 
and he does not serve the God of the Bible. He said, well, well, I'm just, I, just, I just need to give him the grace and the space. I just need to give him the grace. Come on, y'all. Man, I'm telling you, y'all, when, when, when we see all that's taking place in our culture with the world acting a fool, it's people like this is the reason why. It's pastors who are preaching this woke nonsense over their pulpits, who've been discipling men and women in churches for years. We've swallowed the pill. I say we, not me. I, I, I swallowed the pill and I spit it back up. <laughs> but some of these people have swallowed the pill and it done, it, you know, it, it, it's absorbed inside of them now. So now it's in them. You know, now, now, now we got to try to like suck it out of you. But, but listen, y'all, this man has swallowed the pill and now it's messing with it. It'll it, it mess with his whole theology. He can't think straight. He can't speak straight. He can't reason straight. Even if I don't, even if I, I prefer you play basketball, like I love you the person. So I'm going to rock with you the person. And I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to still be with you for the rest of your life. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know, if, if, if some people that I've seen not go to weddings because they just they just didn't like the spouse. Was that OK? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just don't like. No, it. no, that's 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 a little different. That's a little different. That's a lot of different. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. This is getting too long already. Let me finish playing this. Your spouse or I don't like the fact that they older than you or younger than you. That's some preferential type of stuff. And I mean, like, give people the grace and the space to, to navigate that. Why he can't marry her? You know what I'm saying? Oh, because I think she a gold digger. Well, you know, walk. The but, but we're not talking about, we're not, talk, we're not, we're not, that's, that isn't, see, he, in, in order for him to, to justify his answer, he has to use examples that are not the same as the question. Talk about sports, baseball, basketball. You talk about you know a, a a scenario where well well maybe you know there are people who don't go to weddings because they have problems with the the father or someone in the family has a problem with the wife or the good the, the lady. That isn't the question, and he's equating it with that to make it just platable or make it seem like it's not that you know like we just need the grace and the space and all this. And it's like, nah, bro, you you know. You're not you're not falling off the deep end. You don't fell off the deep end. Do this, you know what I'm saying? Now I get it from the standpoint of like, is it wrong or is it right? And that's where I would say there's so much nuance to it for me. And <laughs> oh. now I get it. Is it wrong or is it right? And to me. There's just so much nuance in it. There you have it, folks. That is Lecrae's theology. In terms of like, is marriage, uh, 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 are we talking it as a government sanctioned situation? Are we talking oh, about bro. two Christians? Because is it, if it's two people who believe in the Bible and, and they hold in two to what the Bible says, well, then now I'm like, okay, well, what do you believe the Bible says about this? If you don't believe the Bible, then why am I having this conversation with you? Because God is Lord overall. That's why. That's why we're having this conversation with you. You see, this idea here is that we can't tell unbelievers what God said because they don't believe in God. That's foolish. That that That's giving over you know, ammunition to them. Like, no, they have to, oh, they have to listen to what the Bible says because the Bible is the word of God and there's only one king. And if you don't kiss him, you perish. And so you're commanded to listen and obey. What a coward. This is a coward. Look at that. This is a coward, y'all. Oh, 
on the big stage. You know what I'm saying? It's like you do what you want to yeah, do. I mean, you do what you want to do. There you go, son. You do you. I do me. Everybody does them. Why? Why? Why are you here? Like, like, don't, don't, don't talk. See, this is the thing, man. Like, if that's your answer, man, for real, like, if that's your answer, it's better you just say, look, I'm not going to answer this from a Christian's perspective, you know? And it's like, well, because <laughs> this is a pagan answer. This is a pagan answer. I mean, you even replace the Bible with some other book, right? The Quran. You want to use that. This, this is a pagan answer, y'all. This is not a Christian answer. You can use grace all you want. You can use space. I don't know, grace and space. You can use those words together uh, and have like Christian themes in those ideas. But this isn't Christian at all. This is not a Christian answer. This is this is satanic. This is a satanic answer. This is a deceptive answer. This is an evil answer. This is exactly the opposite of what God commands us to do as Christians, as we call to give a defense for the hope that lies within. Right? We're called to point men to Christ and his standard through the word of God. We're called to call men to repentance. Right? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Look to Christ. Turn from your sin. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, right, all the all the people who entertain these kinds of sins, all the people who live in this way, they will be tossed into the lake of fire with the devil and his minions. See, Paul says, such were some of you, right? When you used to live in these, when you when you when you lived in these abominable lifestyles that God freed you from, Paul says to the Corinthians, that used to be who you were. It's not who you are anymore. See, that's what the Bible says. Right? That's what, that's what the Bible says. So again, we, we, can, we can say these things to our friends who are gay and, and, be, and be honest and patient. And we don't have to have a high-pitched tone or angry tone or anything like that. We could chop it up and talk and say, look, man, listen, I love you, brother. I've been I've been seeing you, you know, in, in your life, in your family's life. I've known you. I, done, I was raised with you. You know, say, say this is a friend of yours that you grew up with. And he, he says he's gay. Listen, I love you, man. But listen, I love God. This is what God says, man. This is what God says, man. There was one time, y'all, I was invited to a wedding. And, and I didn't go to the wedding. And you know why I didn't go to the wedding? I didn't go to the wedding because I was a new believer and the person who was getting married was, there were two unbelievers that were getting married and they were, it was, it was just going to be like a, it wasn't going to be a good environment for me at all. Uh, and I didn't support the wedding that he was in. I didn't support the spouse he was with. I didn't support his own personal lifestyle. Uh, I didn't support that. And I was supposed to be in the wedding. Like I, in fact, I said I was gonna. I was. I said yes at first with a fear, man. Again, I was a new believer, fear, man. And then I, and then I, I said I can't do this. I can't do this with a clear conscience. So I, I retracted. I called him back and I said, brother, I'm sorry, I can't do this. You know, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. And 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 I don't think the Lord approves of the, of this for the for the reasons in my context, you know. If that was my son, same thing. Buddy, I love you, but I, I can't. Because me going to this wedding is going to be a it's going to be identified as if I am in agreement. I mean, you might as well just marry them then. Why not? Like, like if your son said that pops, you know, like, can you, can you marry us, please? This would be so special. This would mean so much. Like, why not? Why not? Cause he going, he going to say, if you say, nah, son, I can't do that. And I said, well, why not dad? Come on. You, you've been talking about grace and space. You've been talking about how you, you know, all this and like, why not pops? Come on, please. Like you love me. Come on. Right. Why not? See? 
I mean, the Bible could be interpreted a million different ways. And, you know, you, you've seen the Bible be used to uplift people as well as condemn people. Yeah. Uh, you, you've seen, you know, the stories of giving and sharing. And then you've also seen people take the mark of Cain and interpret it as being a black person. For sure. You, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Or, or you know, you look at Sodom and Gomorrah. You, you look at, you know, some of the anti-gay messages and that story. Right. And so forth. See, Lecrae's you know, thinking that. He's like, dang. See that? You can tell by his body language. He's like, dang, you got me. The Bible been interpreted a million ways, and this is some examples. And he's like, dang, you got me. You got me. Because you're going to hear his response here. If you want to interpret it that way. It, it could go a million different ways. But that's and that's that's if you really see that's my thing, it's like this. Mm -hmm. If you tell me, you know what I'm saying, if you say, Man, do you think cussing is a sin? And you ask me that. Well, I'm gonna be first question I'm gonna ask you is, do you believe the Bible? Do you believe in sin? Well the, the, the cussing isn't the question. Saying or not, if you say I don't believe in sin, what what does it matter what I think about cussing is a sin if you don't believe? There's a sin and there's a no sin. So this is a mute conversation. Now, if you say, man, I really believe in the Bible. I'm trying to understand it better. What's your perspective on cussing? Then we can have a dialogue and there's grace and space for us to navigate it. But if that ain't what you believe, then we got to start with just, man, first of all, do you believe Jesus? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you believe in Jesus? If you don't believe in Jesus, then what are we talking about right now? You know what I'm saying? Let's get to that first. Then we can move forward in every other situation. Ah, oh, pathetic. That was pathetic. That was pathetic. All right, y'all. Well, that's it. That was pathetic. That was terrible. Um, psh. Psh. I don't even know what to do with that, y'all. I don't even know what to do with that. We're going to stop here. Leave a comment below. Sorry, this was so long. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Am I tripping? Am I... Have I have I lost it? Like, am I missing something? Am I not giving him the grace and the space? Let me know. Till next time, y'all. This is the Proverbial Life Podcast. Where we encourage Christians to look to Christ, live wisely, and leave a legacy behind for generations to follow. Grace and peace.